circumstances we find ourselves now in the meta does mean that definitely a lot of people having a lot more fun with their champions and then definitely showing their uh the what's it called the uh the playing fantasy or something like that can't remember exactly what it's called but um Either way, we'll see what EDG want to try and first pick in here. And again, with the Ari band and the Nico left open, I feel like this is just a very standard pick here. They, they're they very happy, obviously, to try and let open either the Aphelios or the Jinx and say, look, we'll take whichever one you guys don't want. Yeah, Fofo already having a game on this 11 KD8 was a win in their series against NIP. Maokai, something we've highlighted that is open if they wanted to go for like Maokai Jace. If you think back to spring, Jace was one of Rookie's best champions. Uh, when he was performing earlier in the split. Vi, Wukong, like, <laughs> really, it's just the flavor they want to opt into. Kasante can also be something that you look to take away. I guess it would be Ala piloting that one almost for sure if they did leave it over to EDG, unless we finally did get the Nico jungle. But I I've kind of given up on that at this point. It just doesn't seem like it's going <laughs> to make its way into, uh, into a match. Yeah, it's a bit sad. It's a bit sad, really, to kind of, uh, unfortunately, not get that for ourselves. But... It is what it is. We kind of move forward with the uh, the Nico mid lane kind of happening. That could be a Cassante uh, mid, but I imagine it will be going into Wayward's hands. So Cassante not, I wouldn't imagine does exceptionally well into the Nico. Just way you can kind of just keep throwing out different uh, different abilities and all in whenever you need to all in on him, especially with his all out kind of bringing him right on top of you. So the Aphelios now going to be picked up as. Top esports are going to be left open with a either a support or an AD carry pick on the last one. You'd imagine it has to be the AD carry with the Jinx being left open. And the Aphelios back for leave. Again, very, very comfortable on this pick in game number one. Very happy to take it in game number two. Yeah, and you know the Wukong going to be the thing that comes out now. And now when you look over to TS, you know, probably just going to pick in the Jinx. We go into the second rotations. The bands come through. Maybe ban out some top lane champions against all of that you don't want to deal with right some things like the jacks that could potentially go into that top lane but who knows because also a plethora of generic tanks and all has shown that in spring he really became comfortable just being put on tank duty and then allowing your bot lane to carry it's kind of one of the nice things about the edg rosters you really do have three lanes that can take over and ooh, i love this screw the jinx let's not go there let's get something more interesting in the bot lane and getting rookie on a strong laning champion hopefully this can like propel rookie into into having that carry performance right if it can dominate that 1v1 in the laning phase and try to transfer this lead around the map absolutely and i think that's the big thing there is getting rookie onto something he's comfortable and we've comfortable on it's something that we've seen him many many times in many many years play this champion and have such great success with it this is going to be enough. A lot of all in, a lot of ways of kind of bursting someone down with ultimates here on the side of top esports. EDG definitely not too far away from that as well. And I love this as well from EDG. They're kind of saying, you know what? If you don't value the Jinx, maybe we don't value the Jinx. We're going to find a way the virus and make sure that you have to play this matchup. And we want you to play the Jinx, even though everyone else thinks is, you know, the obvious ban will be the, the actual champion Jinx itself. Yeah, because you really wonder where they fall to if that one then isn't left open. Again, I'll, I'll highlight this again to where in other roles we've had 10, you know, like 10 plus champions played in AD carry. We've still only had six, only six different AD carries have been picked so far in the LPL. Once you can pass to Felios, Jig, Zeri, it's Lucian, Zaya, and Kogma. I think like forcing Kogma without the melee alongside it can be quite hard. I guess the Zaya theoretically still there. And we're going to see now, do they just opt into banning that one out? I still think it's what would make the most sense to make sure Jackie Love does get his hands on something powerful. We'll see. As you do, as you ask, you shall receive. And that means the Zyra Khan could probably come out here now. So something we have actually kind of forgotten about a little bit, but still very, very powerful in its own right. We'll give them a nice little bit of engage. So, okay, top esports, they've got themselves opportunities now to make moves that will work out for their team fights. And it looks like Mako is going to be going back to something he is very well known for is going to be that uh i'm not a list no don't do it don't no mako come on buddy no i don't want you to be that guy i like you mako and you don't need to be that guy jordan is I that also, guy I, we we really don't need that guy in the lp oh mako good man Mako's, he's not that you know guy what? no you're right he's not that guy mako's that guy you know yeah, and everyone that, needs to be that, that guy, that guy. <laughs> yeah, and now now's where all it goes again i feel like all of the past would have always opted into something like a Jax here. Uh, if in, okay, well, never mind. Even all of the present probably opt into Jax here. I was wondering if they'd want more frontline, but they really don't need 
more frontline if they did want to opt into you know a Gragas or like whatever the el whatever else you just wanted to throw to be a generic uh, placeholder. But we will get this. Does have a favorable matchup into the Cassante. You have more than enough damage, and they should be able to find that side pressure once again as the expected Zaya comes through. So top esports have put more. Uh, onus onto like Rookie and Wayward having good performances, right? They've first rotation the Cassante this time around, not wanting to give that one over. They got Rookie on something strong and, and allowed the Jinx to be banned out. So I feel like we're really going to have to see Wayward and Rookie be the ones to step up to where EDG have gotten something that is, you know, incredibly meta, meta but also comfort with things like the Jax being able to come through and Fofo, like I said, having a great performance on that Nico and Mako being that guy. No Yumi's that here. That guy. Absolutely love to see it, EDG. It's more hope against EDG. It's early in the split. So, you know, mistakes and, and losses happen, but you really want to see more out of players the caliber on top esports. WWE. <laughs> Allah didn't go right fishing. There. No, that one that one didn't quite get enough onto it, as we see Mako using his uh, Spider-Man skills to kind of go at it. I do actually have a slight update on something that we discussed earlier. Do you remember the, the fan sign, the 1,532? Yeah. So, LPL fan, club, at LPL fan Club on Twitter have translated it for us. Uh, it's a, I get you were looking for 1,532 days. Last time when EDG beat top esports in the regular split was March 23rd, 2019. It has been more than four years since EDG was able to beat top esports in the regular split. Yeah, you know what? You Little Machine, I'm very thankful that our stats team gave that to us as a oh, wait. Absolutely. Uh, Hey man, I was I was I was LEC stats before I was LPL caster, you know. Hey, hey, Sometimes you gotta you, go you, for it. You, you were my stats team at one point last split. That was your stats was. team the other day. You know, I was. We we, we like to send each other little uh, little tidbits of uh, of information as we can now see JJ with that level two, kind of just running around. <laughs> And back around we go. He just, Top Esports he just, TN literally just went on a nice little move and he's going to get himself the red buff anyway, so it'll be not really that big of a difference. Yeah, does uh does it lose out in terms of a bit of time? Is oh, Leaves Flash already burnt? I mean, you had to burn it there. Leaves just a little bit too far forward and Mark gets a perfect setup. You bump down the Ignite, you get in with the Feathers going down as well with Jackie Love hitting level two. That would have been a kill. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not questioning the flash itself, but just huge from Mark and Jackie Love to get that. Must have been pissed from what happened in game one. Not going to allow Leave to get anywhere near as big. And even if Tien may be a little bit behind in terms of, like, clearing his own jungle, at least now uh, we'll have some relief knowing he has some pressure and prio down in that bot side. Absolutely. And now see what they can kind of make work with this one here. And it does feel like top esports have kind of built a little bit better... Uh, Laning phase, get some advantages out of the early game that they maybe didn't have in the game number one, and and try and just work to get this bot lane going for themselves. The Zaya Rakan can get ahead if they can really put pressure down onto this uh, Aphelios. It will become so much harder for EDG to take those fights. Again, it's an 80 carry centric meta, and the Zaya is so fantastic at burning through, you know, relatively squishy champions. When she even with just a Gale Force or even a, uh, a Storm Razor, she should be able to just kind of melt down people like Fofo and Jitche. Yeah. And I mean, again, gonna be able to dodge out on people like like Nico, like the Wukong, and I like to hit on the lanes because having you know these strong, stronger lane champions in bot this time around with the Rakan, as well as uh, Syndra, who should be able to contest for Pryon mid. Rookie was controlling the lane earlier on, but this this time around, Bofo getting the pushback still won't affect Tian being able to pick up that bot side skittle. And looks like on the mini map, jungles are about to meet. It's a meet, but. Up and down a ward, and that's about it. Again, good to see TN kind of recognizing where his power lies right now. You've got about three or more, so three and a half minutes, I would say, maybe a little bit more before that flash comes back up on leave. So, I want to try and put down as much pressure as I can. But this the problem is that with the changes to the way you know everything works and the power spikes that everyone kind of goes for, it just doesn't really work out in your favor to go for a full dive bot side unless you can get either Wayward or Rookie to really contribute and get a 4v2. Yeah, especially with that Allah. instance. Oh, you're right. Allah has to get the hell out of dodge. <laughs> Even there, JJ was level four compared to Tien being level three. Tien gonna try to go for the scuttle crab now. Is he gonna run into him? He's gonna see him, but uh, it's gonna be a smite fight. One out by JJ, so no level four for you, Tien. 
And then just a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of love pats on the way out just to say, hey, I'm the Wukong. You don't win this early matchup. And we're seeing a lot of health bars and mana bars being traded out in terms of the aggression between these two. And JJ wants to be aggressive. He wants to jump on the TN and make him pay for what he's been able to kind of go for right now. Interesting enough, the dummy actually goes straight over to the side of the Raptors and starts oh, to... Oh, no! Oh! Oh, I'm going to need to see that one in slow motion replay because that Same. was close. Oh, Mark is going to go for an engage now. Flash for flash. Feathers go down. Can they get a kill back? That's the question. Mark picks that one up with the ignite. Now, Jackie Love, nowhere to be seen. A TB coming in. That's going to be rookie from base. They know they can just keep them slowed down. They can go for a good flash from Mako. The man, he is that guy. He is the Nautilus you want to be seeing in your games. And Mark shall be going down as well. EDG still coming out three for one. <laughs> That's so surprising. After it looked like maybe TS could do something in this 2v2 matchup. We're gonna go back towards this top side. You know, goes in with the E to start off, Q to follow up. I am so surprised by this damage, but looks like the Q animation goes through and gets the damage down. Flash coming off afterwards. As a uh, here. Here, I mean, right, Top Esports already have the Summoner spell advantage coming on through, so Mark gets chunked low, but then flashing forward to follow up with the damage, Ignite goes out. And it's so easy to get that first kill to start things off, but then there he is, Sheen. That's your guy. Ah, they didn't show he, it. He is him. He is him. They were afraid there was going to be a bit of a fight up on this top side. We see now the all out coming in. I don't know if Allah survives this. Yeah, he doesn't. And uh, that was just a really unfortunate time to try and take a 1v1, Allah. Uh, good by Wayward, though, because Wayward's someone who, right, when he first came in, had a lot of fanfare, had a lot of moments solo killing people. Never still really, like, insane in terms of, like, gapping people in terms of CS and landing in that regard, but had a lot of solo kills. And then it's kind of, like, fallen off after the fanfare of his first split. Hasn't been able to find the same level of performances, which is why we have seen, like, top esports go between him and Xing Tian. But uh, coming out ahead this time around, already even some nice trades with this Q, as it looks like. And then still not committing with any engage just yet, waiting for things like the counter strike to come out before he goes in with the W, holding on to the R, and then manages to get it with one final Q. Yeah, I just think uh, I think Allah expected a little bit more autos to come in there to hit the counter strike and then maybe flash away, but was not to be. We come back into live three to two on the scoreboard. It is literally that goal, that single kill of gold that is in the favor of EDG. They are gonna try and start off this first round and a lot of chakrams. And you do not have any summoners now between Jack Love and Mark. This is the big thing. They hard committed into leave. 100% got their kill. No problem with that whatsoever. But you committed so much to get it. Four summoners. And it was just at the end of it, leave full, you know, kind of a full, a full plate to work off of. So now you got to be playing a little bit more respectfully than you were a couple of minutes ago. Now going to come out on top with the dragon. TS, again, still doing a solid job in terms of laning. We already saw what Wayward did. Rookie having a little bit of a CS lead. Jackie Love and Mark, in terms of the two, two have been winning out. But EDG bringing it together as a team better. They're going to try to set up for this dive. Tien's nowhere close. and You don't have TP on your soul laners. Yeah, no TP, no. Oh, Ultimate just got in there for Jackie Love, but is he going to die anyway? Yes, he will. The Moonlight Vigil does enough. Leave tanking up quite a bit, but just enough. And that's going to be two swift kills there for EDG. And they're saying, hey, you want to bully our bot lane? We're going to bully yours. And it's going to be huge, right? Sure, top esports are going to get ripped killed, but you not only are going to get plates down uh, on your bot laners, but getting those kills, denying gold and experience onto Jackie Love and Mark, more than a worthwhile trade for EDG. And we said we had to keep an eye on people like Rookie and Wayward, how they're doing. Wayward delivering so far the solo kill, Rookie delivering in terms of winning CS. We're going to have to start seeing this translated into like tangible objectives. They did do it in terms of getting this Rift Herald, might get a blue, but they're going to need to get something bigger or they EDG is just going to become monsters. Don't think he can take this one here. JJ there with a Sheen means that he should be uh, well Rookie's able to kill Rookie's close by. Fofo's yes, not here. Go for Smite. This my fight goes to TN. Yeah, so Fofo had to go for a reset off of the uh, the trades that Rookie was able to find in the mid lane. So Fofo had to recall, didn't have TP to get back to mid faster, try to join up in that fight. So luckily, TN does get out with a little bit more than than maybe he he should have. Just a little bit more. Nothing to be crazy riding home about, but we will not have an ult now on Jackie Love. This is the big thing. Nico's ult will be up. Just a little bit before it. We'll see you if know, they want to try and go for something you know, beforehand. 
just this is just real quick. You said nothing to go, you know, crazy over. There's a lot of junglers in solo queue who would go crazy True. over their blue buff being stolen a lot. Honestly, they maybe crazy. we can say yeah, this case. Crazy. You go on. You go on, Ashim. I was just gonna you say finish. it's crazy. Then it's like, is it crazy good or crazy bad? Like they steal the blue buff or they get their blue buff stolen? Is it both? Oh no, no, you know they don't care if they steal a blue buff. They just care if their blue buff stolen. But yeah. in lieu of that spirit, I think we can just call top esports the winners right now and overreact <laughs> massively to that blue buff being stolen. Stop the count. It's fine. It's done. Oh. Leave it on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now you're speaking my language. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all about the it's all about the little wins in this in these games. But I like the recall coming out here from Jackie Lowe to kind of solidify his Storm Rangers. We are going to see almost identical one from Leave in the next few seconds, you would imagine. Two minutes till the next Dragon spawns. Four minutes till Rift Herald as well. So we're back into a little bit of a lull state. Five to two in kills in favor of EDG. They have themselves a dragon, but there is a Rift Herald there sitting in Tien's inventory. It is timing out fairly quickly, and he hasn't picked the lane just yet. Might be able to try and make this work on bot lane, but it will be difficult. So Mark just trying to be aggressive. And that Gravitum needs to be respected. Yeah, you can see him kind of hovering down now as Mark. Oh, TP. Oh, almost keeping in. They're looking for Mark. Try and make sure he can kill him off. Jackie Love will have his ultimate just about off the last second. They're going to try and pop Blossom in. And they will be able to get him. They'll try and jump straight back on the rookie. Where did he even come from? I don't even know where he was. Leave will go down. So the AD carries are dead. Now Nico taken out as well. Wayward so massive on this. There's a flash in to get the counter strike down. Jackie Love will survive though. And top esports find themselves on the backside of a huge win for them in this team fight. Honestly, that was just pure chaos. So much going on. I believe the difference maker was Wayward just getting there so early. And now TES, I mean, going to be able to start pushing this down. Thank God. I was scared that the Rift Herald was about to time out. It's going to be some much needed gold onto Jackie Love. And we're saying, hey, it's going to be about the landing phase. It's going to be about the early skirmishes and early gold for TES. And now they can start finally stacking it up huge swing back in their favor and again it's just the fact that they have summoners they try to overforce this on the jackie love because they think they found him and mark but then the cyclone doesn't really hit anybody no it doesn't connect to anyone rookie with a bit of an unfortunate tp does end up being the one to get punished cleansed from jackie love to escape but look look how early this Cassante is tping into this fight so jackie loves already unloading you have nowhere to go his leave is now taken out and with tn coming from the other angle it's like what do you do ala just now gets here so Goodbye, TS, because typically it is the, the team that is, like, initiating the play that should be, like, first on TPs and first moving. But a great reaction time coming out of the members from Top Esports. Yeah, and great to see Wayward kind of making that TP play, making that call. You said you wanted to see him and, and obviously Rookie as well. The solo laners really step up here for the side of Top Esports. Brings them to equal parity. It's not the game just yet. Still plenty of fights to come coming out of this one here. And honestly, I think that EDG very happy to let this dragon go if it leads to that because they're just trying to get they're just trying to get back to some kind of control. They need to have themselves back in the front foot of this fight because right now Wayward is a scary boy and Allah can't really deal with him. Yeah, I'd be really interested to see the the like gold and, and who has what advantages where is Wayward just gonna run Allah down. On top of having the kills, having a 20 CS lead, we can see already having some mythic done. Bot I thought lane. a fight was going to break out of Sheen. Yeah, I, I was sure I of it. I was hopeful. I, 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 was, I was waiting for you to pick it back up, but it's okay. You know, we all make mistakes. It, it's not uh. okay, and it's not a mistake by me. It's a mistake by these players for not being more bloodthirsty. Yes, there it is. There it is. They're going to try TN. and jump on top of this one here. There's the ultimate from the Nautilus. The Moonlight Vigil straight down onto Tien, who's getting hit by the Chakrams. And that's just way, way, way too aggressive. All they're going to get solo boloed for one more time. Wayward using this Cassante to absolutely beautiful effect. But in a one for one, it's still EDG. We're going to be able to take away this dragon. Wayward reminding everyone again why his debut was so spectacular and why so many people were excited for this guy. Still, though, Tien kind of giving up the advantage on the opposite side is a little bit tragic. Could have been a win on top side as well as a dragon coming on through. I guess now I understand why the teams weren't as bloodthirsty when I asked for it about a minute ago. Because, uh, yeah, that was not it. Is We're actually going to replay of Wayward and what he does up in top side. Great use of the Q for the knockback. And then the all out over the wall to make sure the damage goes down. Blast Plant nowhere to escape. All tragedy for Allah, and all, a lot of it coming down to the heavy uh, trading that, that led into yeah. that replay. 
from MVP to who is he? Uh, definitely not a oh, good no. locking game number two. <laughs> Feel bad, but you know, sometimes you gotta roll with it. And again, you know, EDG still I, I would argue still coming out on top in terms of the grand scheme of the trade. They're now on two dragons, it's another hex rift, so they can decide whether or not they want to go for the next dragon or two or three, to be perfectly honest, before they really want to try and make this one go. And little small things that will be the difference makers in this series. I feel like Toppy Sword's Wayward needs to get on to leave. If he can find the Aphelios and get him, you know, either out of the fight or straight up kill him, are both very viable. Definitely something you can be able to do. Allah, you are way too far pushed forward. You cannot be that Ooh. far up. And Top Esports I... will just turn and burn for back for the Rift Herald. I can't believe they didn't commit to keep going. They have a yeah. ward behind him, so they know he didn't keep walking. I guess they could be afraid that there's like other people in the jungle itself making making their way up. So that would be my thought process as to why Top Esports didn't keep trying out. to chase him down. Yeah. yeah. But even then, he'd probably want to be sure. I mean, that's how I feel. But, uh... Sadly, it's not how uh, Top Esports feels. So uh, they get themselves the Rift Heralds. So it's going to be two Rift Heralds to two Dragons. 1,500 gold lead for Top Esports at the moment. But those two Dragons will start to scale. And you can see that first item's being completed. Second one's not too far away. Actually, Wayward should have his full Thorn Mail very, very soon. And this is, a, again, a very, very scary prospect because uh, Fofo's not really going to have the damage for a very long time to try and, you know, burst him out in any way, shape, or form. No. Yeah, <laughs> like... My god, who's going to be able to take this man down at all? Oh, it's going to be rough. Kind of looking at where we should keep Rise next, right? It's going to be on TN, considering he does have that Herald. I mean, there's really only one place to use it, which is going to be trying to overload that mid lane. Looks like Top Esports already even going to try to set up for a bit of a pick and hope that Leave walks up to catch this wave. But EDG doing their due, due diligence. Doing their due diligence, strapping down Shirley into this mid lane and making sure they can get as much off of this push as they possibly can. We'll say there's a deep TP coming in here, and that's going to be Fofo right on the back side of this one, maybe pretending to be JJ. They do see him, though. Everybody backs away. I like the idea from EDG, but still decent coverage here from the side of Top Esports to make sure they're not getting caught out by such a, uh, a primitive TP play. I do like that EDG like just tried to create a window though, because there's really no neutral objectives up, right? They're just trying to hold off for the push. They thought an opening was there. It's not. It's like okay, not the end of the world for Fofo to not have that TP. It does mean you have to be more conscious of like the side pressure that Top Esports put up. But rookie's on Syndra, not a champion that really wants to commit more than just like catching waves that are close by his own turret. Yeah, all I wanted to move up onto that, but you can see playing respect, like you said, he is zero on three, so not having the. Uh... The same confidence as he did in game number one. And we go back to just kind of ping-ponging waves, getting ourselves some vision control around the map, figuring out where the next opportunity, excuse me, where the next opportunity will be. And minute 20, minute 20, I imagine, is when the next real fight will spark up. But again, like I said, no. you're, if you're EDG, you don't have to go for this. No. I kind of want to go back to you pointing out Ala playing safe respectfully because I'm always going to find it funny now of, of what Doonby said on stream last split of him being like, man, Mako's a genius. Mako got Allah under control. Here I was telling Allah, don't int. And, you know, that didn't do anything. And Mako's telling him, don't kill. It's so much smarter. Like, positive, the, you know, <laughs> the, the, the positive spin on it. You're not you're not putting him down, which is therefore then going to make him want to int more. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it makes sense, you know. To, to, I'm always down for positive reinforcement over negative reinforcement. Exactly. You don't, so, you don't want to be turning around and saying, like, oh, you suck. Don't in on me. Rather, it's like, you know what? I don't think you should go for this kill. You'll get it, but I don't think you should go for it. And yeah, that's, that's, a lot, like, that's a lot better. Ollie, you don't need those. Actually, this game, he does need those kills. Zero, three, he needs we're someone going to tell again. him maybe not to end a little bit. He will be able to <laughs> leap strike his way back You need to get Doombi on the phone. Yeah, Doombi, where oh. are you at? I'm pretty sure he's... Uh, He's uh, co-streaming as of right now. We will see EDG and Top Esports find themselves back towards this Dragon Pit. This would be a sole point for EDG. Top Esports, though, bringing Wayward down. You can see the Nico bottom and the Jax top. Highly doubtful that EDG are going to try and go for this fight. They're just going to probably give up this objective. No problem. No questions. Yeah, you cannot do any... It's such a, like, tough problem for EDG to not solve because anytime Wayward's there, it's like, what are you going to do? How do you get past this? Especially not until you have the Lord Doms on lead for sure. But even post that, all is still going to be behind. And you're going to rely on like flanks coming out from Ala, coming out from Fofo to be able to even have Nico and Jax have a meaningful impact on the type of fights that, that EDG want.
Yeah, JJ looking to get on top of Jackie Love. Will get a fair bit of damage and the ultimate. They didn't know exactly where JJ went, so getting an ult out of the Zaya, definitely good, but it's, that was your flash, and there wasn't really any kind of follow-up there. That was a strange sequence of plays there. Yeah, and also just kudos to Rookie with the scout of the week. I don't know, even if he didn't connect it, if there was really much more that EDG could have done to follow it up, but I mean, that connecting even just, you know, sealed the deal that there was really nothing JJ himself could do more. But yeah, it seemed like a very ambitious engage on mid lane. But hey, again, maybe hoping that Top Esports will kind of give in and you can then follow up on the play and still no objective up for quite a while unless either team was willing to uh, risk a bit of a crazy Baron. A little bit of a crazy Baron. <laughs> I mean, to be, be fair, we did see game one. We did fight. see crazy Baron, so. It's true, it's true. I was just more giving you, giving you stink for your uh, inclination. But we will see Mark getting... A good engage off there on top of Fofo and taking him out. And now Top Esports might feel like they can go for a Baron. I will say, though, it's only 30 seconds and a Flash TP and ult still available on the Nico. I, I, this is risky. And look at where the members of TS have gone. It's like Tien starts pathing down towards spot with Wayward, ends up coming back up. Might be able to catch out Mako, but looks like he's not going to overcommit into this side of River. EDG just wanting to keep tabs on what the situation with Baron is, but Top Esports didn't start it up. I wonder if they'll try to force out a TP, but that'd be so risky. It would be Mako now the target. They're going to just try and use it as a pirate. Oh, Mako. I feel like you should have just accepted your, your death there, and that means that you're now without a support for any kind of vision control, and they can go straight onto this Baron. They don't need to give up this mid lane turret because there's no wave. Leave can't burn it down as quickly. Now they realize it's going down. They have to try and go for some kind of fight or maybe just give up the objective. Yeah, they're just giving it up. I mean, there's nothing they can do, right? Uh, th this looks like it should be going the distance. It should be going to three games. I won't count it out just yet again after how crazy game one ended in terms of PS, but Mark here waiting in the wings, having the flank available. They chain the Violti in. They just pretty much throw everything at Bofo to make sure he goes down. And then sadly, Mako was doing a nice job of like respecting, but still staying in range in case the Baron started, but eventually did get engaged on, which led to that play to be able to come through from TES. This is it. This is kind of where the game is going to stick at for the next while now. You've got two minutes to the next Dragon. Top Esports have got themselves a 4,000 gold lead and looking much more cohesive and coordinated comparatively to game number one. So that's it finish off this victory though that's the big thing Ala, oh he is not having fun and that is the power of a syndra and vi you combo the ultimates together and there's just nothing you can really do no and now gonna be able to use the baron buff they have in the mid lane they have rookie controlling bot side because he doesn't teleport you bring your jungle back over and there really isn't much you need you can do answering out Ofo. through these two lanes he's trying to be sneaky count your minions don't let it get too far ahead. I think they know what's going to be going on. Yeah, they don't really get fall out for that. But my mark on way too far forward. Jackie Love will be knocked up so he can't avenge his support. Rookie will have that top or bottom tier two, like you mentioned, but definitely didn't need to give up that kill. There's still plenty of firepower left in the CDG roster. Oh, and it might not be done yet, Tien. TP, damage to make TP on the backside. They're trying to take this a 5v4. They're trying to make it a 4v3. Jackie Love's so low, he flashes. He gets the feathers with the bomb on the head. You go to jail. Now Ala kind of distracting the rest of the team as Wayward is the one who gets bursted out. Now he can turn back and turn back right on top of Tien. If he kills off the jungler, they can get themselves into soul point. What's happening? Yeah, somehow, though, Tien does survive because Rookie landing that critical scout of the week. EDG still coming out ahead. They're going to push down this mid lane turret. Uh, and still it looks 5v3. like they're going to keep going. It's still 5v3, Mark. Does sidestep right at the right moment there. Does not get hit by the hook, but they're losing two turrets off of this. And that's going to be Tien not going down. I thought when they landed the, the CC, they might have gone in on top of him. But that is three kills and one random ass push coming in here as EDG just recognized, look, we're just stronger. And this is like top esports somewhat being the aggressors as well, right? Jackie Love separated from the other members. Shuri is ult but goes down. Rookie was still pushing in bot lane. We obviously saw Mark just killed himself, you know, moments before. It's just a perfectly for EDG to come out ahead. They might have been able to get more right there, but again, Rookie landed a really nice scatter of the week to make sure that Tian was able to get away uh, safely. Give yeah, the still going to be their dragon. Yeah, they'll give it up, but I think they're very happy the way that kind of fight went. In fairness, it does bring 
Felios now up to three items. It's still ahead of Jackie Love in that regard. I was going to say, EDG could have maybe gone for a fight around that Dragon Pit because there was no ult or flash on Jackie Love, but thought the better of it. Didn't want to fully commit until they have all their things themselves. And now this game gets a little bit closer, a little bit harder to predict. It looked like Top Esports were in control and similar to game number one. Feels like EDG just had that little bit of cutting edge, I don't know what you want to call it, clutch factor, I suppose, that just bringing them back into these games. Knowing that they have a lot to work with as the game goes on, right? Like Jax, Jax eventually will become relevant. The problem isn't that, it's like where he is in relation to Wayward, but has most have been able to catch up in CS because of course being on the Cassante Wayward is grouping up a lot more than he's playing out through the side lanes. And now with LDR done on leave, you're gonna be able to start influencing that front line on the opposite side ts also have some nice damage but also way more index in the burst right you have this injury you have the vi also like navori quick blades on zaya oh fofo just trying to run away from this one here will go golden but i don't think he's gonna be able to survive jackie love gonna pop his feathers down fofo just unfortunately did not have the vision did not have the control and gets caught out very very quickly i think he might still get a tower though for his effort and look minute and a half till baron it's just a pick is a bit of gold, but you're right. Again, not all picks are created equally. Had a dragon, had a baron been up, or something more tangible they could take, would have been disastrous. But Fofo seems like just wanted to try and guarantee he gets that wave and gets that pushed out. Still goes over, and Top Esports still going to be happy that they get a free pick and get some more gold into their own pockets. I'm interested to see when, uh, when Rookie will have a bit more gold himself and can start making his way to that next item. Banshee's is a good call, I think, you know, gets you, gets you not caught out by a lot of the single target CC, the hook, of course, the, uh, the CC coming out from the Nico can be very, very deadly. So you see Ala finally getting a push down in this bot side, should be able to crash that wave, so nicely done by him, and we're just kind of back in a lull state. We're going to wait to see where these AD carries kind of bring the rest of their build. I love the rapid fire cannon coming out from Jackie Love because he recognizes, much like that last fight, if JJ gets on top of him, it doesn't matter how fat he is, he's going to be able to kill you. Yeah, playing a ranged game, right? Using the Rapid Fire Cannon, using the Navori, which makes it more also about using things like your Q and your E, and getting your damage off that way, and maintaining that distance, being able to kite and peel out. So has a good read of, of, of what he needs to do to be able to survive in these fights, and now fishing for picks, right? We've seen it many times. Syndra, Vi, single target CC, Rakan, very easily able to follow up. It's about pushing a little bit deeper, trying to get that vision line like an inch further, and then uh, catching out people when they're in transit. It's red and blue for the moment. You can see Leave going towards those Raptors, trying to get rid of these blue guns as quick as he possibly can. So he can it's swap be a over, you imagine. Of TS, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Why are you worried using that mitigation okay, really, very, very nicely? Rookie. Yeah, Rookie, rookie getting himself a good below. sideway push, but I mean, look at the way this map is kind of split. It's top half belongs to t top esports, and the bottom half at the moment belongs to EDG, so it's kind of just a standoff to see who's going to crack first. And it looks like top esports are ready to commit because Rookie is still pushing that turret, and no one yeah, from the side park. of EDG is going back just yet. He's going to be fine. He does back himself away very nicely. It will just be a trade of a turret for a turret. You imagine Allah picks this one up, no problem, no question. But look Go at that. back again. Yeah, that's I mean, now in striking damage. distance. I could still go down. Straight yeah. up. I could go down to minions. <laughs> and now EDG, what do they do? Aren't going to just pull the trigger on a Baron. Going to keep trying to control vision for now. Once they have an inkling that recalls have come out, now, there it though. is. Turn instantly. Yeah, there we go. Mark went back. So then they have got the hex gates to try and bring them back into relevant. But this is a 6,000 HP, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000, and it's gone. 100 HP, TN wasn't able to get in. Now the double TP going to be coming on top of this one here. Rookie looking for the flank. Will be able to get it, but leave oh, immediately leave. flashes away. The paw blossom is huge. Now Jackie Love's in, or in so much trouble. The both 80 carries have been killed, but it's a two for one trade in favor of Top Esports. Now it's all on to Mako to get himself out of this fight. Ala did do the right job. He got himself back on top of this. The all out right over the wall. Baron goes to EDG, but Top Esports get the fight. You have a giant Cassante TPing in behind you. There is really no means of escape for most members of EDG there. I think they should be count themselves lucky that two members managed to escape with the Baron to try to generate themselves some pressure. But hell, this should end up being a, another dragon on Top Esports side, as we're going to see here. Again, having both your soul laners TP in, I feel like the more fearsome one definitely being wayward with how big he is, but look at the damage. 
from Rookie to start things off. It makes it so Rakan can come from behind and just kill the Aphelios himself. That's one marksman My down. Gosh. Sadly, though, you do have Ala, who does manage to get on top of the Zaya and be able to follow through there. And then, I mean, at this point, right, once both AD carries go down, top esports just have the bigger members in the other roles with, with how much people like uh, Ala were set behind. And there it is. Three Hextech Drakes. You're on soul point, and top esports are uh, they're pretty close to terrifying. As yeah, rookie, they the really, damage. really are. I, I mean, look, Rookie did his job. Rookie put his ult and everything, all his damage onto Leave. Doesn't matter after that. That's all he needs to do. So Leave, unfortunately for him, gets kind of caught up with that. Rookie thinking about maybe someone might be here, and he's exactly right. There's a good scout of the week. There's a good quickness to try and make sure that Rookie can't get jumped upon. But it does mean that that turret in top lane will finally go down. Yeah, and it looks like Wayward in mid lane still hoping that someone shows on mid and they can turn that into a pick. Where, I mean, it, it's weird, right? Because gold has never really ballooned too far out of control in yeah, either it's way. Less and less relevant. Yeah, we just got a Bloodthirster picked up by Leap as well as a stopwatch, which could be massive for the next fight, but it's Allah. Oh, I thought Allah was going to get punished again. And you know what? I mean, at first you're kind of like happy for Wayward, but now you just feel bad for all every time it happens. Yeah, it just kind of gets to a point where you're just like, I feel like this is going so, so badly for you, and it's just not really working out. Mark, trying to get some aggressive vision now. They should know that there's going to be plenty of wards around this dragon pit, which will be spawning in 3 minutes 45. Baron's going to waste out with only a couple of hundred, maybe even if even, in the favor of EDG. And that's two Barons now we've seen in a row where the, the, the Baron power play hasn't actually equal to much of anything. Yeah, hasn't done much at all. I also want to point out, Ala picking up the Zanyas on the Jax. You know, something we've seen before. 369 actually did it in his last showing on Jax. And Zanya is just one of those items it's you kind of see Stanyard. pop up. Yeah, pop up in different metas on pretty much anyone just because it does allow you to survive a bit longer. You get another rotation of cooldowns down. It was, oh, big damage from Rookie. Ooh. Oh, JJ. <laughs> my God. Yeah, JJ needs to <laughs> leave. The Shirelia's Revelry gets used here. They're looking to try and maybe use this little bit of a health trade. In their favor, no objective to take, but that was scary for a moment there for JJ. Look at all the vision control here available for the side of Top Esports. That's why they're so confident moving forward. They know that Wayward, right up until that last ward was put down, he was unseen. And he's now sitting in a brush that would have been unseen had it not been for that Scryers. But EDG are committing with the sideline game. Look at all of... Is it looks like he's thinking about backing up now. Does finally do it, but really committing to that deep push trying to buy as much time as they can to, to get the gold they need to, to feel like they can fight on even footing. I mean, we know, right? They're not going to give over Hextech Soul for free, so we're definitely going to get to a, a point in the next two and a half minutes where we probably get the game-defining fight. I mean, it's two and a half minutes for the Soul, but it's two minutes for the Baron. We might see well, only about 15 or so seconds between the two of those objective spawning. So now, JJ looking to try and maybe get up. I think he really wants to get his Merc Treads. You can see just the extra little bit of tenacity would go uh, such a long way to trying to stop getting burst out from this uh, from the Syndra. So imagine he'll be going back to finish up that particular item now to make sure he's in tip-top shape for what could potentially be the game-ending fight. There they are. I just really wonder who is going to take down Wayward now that he also has his Randuins finished up. Just having so much armor, like, leave. Leave's gonna hurt him, right? Leave's pretty close to a full build AD carry, but I feel like Wayward could just tank so much as compared to anyone on the side of EDG. Sure, you have some Zanyas coming out. You have a GA on your jungler. But in terms of just r raw stats right now, that's where top esports are winning out. They have more damage on their side coming out from the Syndra and the Zaya, and then just more frontline with the fact that Wayward have... Wayward's only one item away from being full build himself. Yeah. Only a little bit away from uh, finishing off his entire build. And I will say, though, it's a, it's kind of gets to an item parody where it's like these these item, you know, the, the, these gold leads and such just don't really mean that much later on in the game. I will they say, don't. though, Rookie, ha they don't, but they do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's a strange one. <laughs> it's like one of those ones where, like, I, I feel like damage especially, right? It's like any squishy champion at this point is going to, like, potentially one shot another is engage. Comes out. I'm gonna put down some decent damage. This is what I'm talking about. There's not really a lot of magic resistance here onto Wayward. If they go look to try and take out JJ, who goes a little bit too far forward, but it's the clone. There's the GA going. The Pop Blossom to stop everybody from jumping in. They use the Gargoyle Stone Plate, but they're all dying. And Do once again, an anticlimactic flight means that we're gonna see EDG possibly taking out Top Esports right at the depth. 
How does it happen again? Is Ala now just gonna chase the end down? He That's gets another him. kill done and dusted. And now, oh, rookie. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not even rookie. Ala just kind of saying, I'm out. No worries about it. There's a hex flash over the wall. Mako saying, Where are you gonna go, buddy? But he might have gone a little bit too far forward. Never mind. Mako is him. And he's gonna force everything out of top esports just to survive. Syndra will go down. Jackie Love looking to try and be the last man standing. But Lyric, this could be the game. Yeah, I mean, we have Mark coming up now, but long death timers for everyone else. How do EDG win this? I don't know. I don't know how, but they've got themselves a couple of seconds before they've got Wayward back. They're going to look to try and end it. You still have Leave so healthy. No summoners. It's Jackilo versus Leave. Nexus turret number one has already fallen. There's another one going down. The Nexus is exposed. They get the grab him down. Another pot blossom. We started with it, but it's not done just yet. Leave now getting jumped up by Wayward. Can they finish off the Nexus? I don't believe they can, and we shall continue. Jackie Love and Mark buy enough time for Raid Boss Wayward to come online and they hold it together. And now this is going to be sold to their side for free. But EDG, my God, they were so close. Wow. What a game right now. They'll get the Hex Soul right off the back of it, unless Mako has something to do about it. Unless you got a smite in somewhere in there, buddy. Hey, remember, I don't remember think Mako is him, Machine. Mako is Mako him. Mako is him, but even he has his limits. They're going to get both the Baron and the Hex Soul. Let's have a look at this replay. It's going to be a long one for you, Lyric. Yeah, I mean, Engage comes out right. Getting some of the damage down still takes a while, but other members aren't here. But then it's just the separation able to come through. Jejus, like, blocking them off at first with the Cyclone, and then the Pop Blossom not allowing anyone else to come forward. Just great, like, so much huge AoE zones for them to circumvent. And then I love Alo with the Killer Instinct to recognize this is our time. We need to start chasing them down. Had he finished off Jackie Love here, I mean, this would have been game. It would yeah. have been game. It's so unfortunate. Like, one auto difference in being able to win versus now. Right, Top Beastworks should win this. They have Baron, they have Soul. But we have now said Top Esports should win this a few times, and they haven't won this yet. So I'm, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Everything I mean, out the window. The thing is right now, though, is that your Nexus is exposed. You can't leave your base. You don't gain anything from this Baron apart from just wave clear. So the next two minutes are just going to be you sitting in, waiting to see if someone overextends on EDG. So EDG get all the time in the world to get the next item onto the Nico, who has but fallen luck. a little bit behind. Like, it's, it's, it's just hard. Look at the top esports vision, though. That they have vision in all the avenues you can like try to backdoor from. So at least they're yeah. very conscious of For like, now. hey, <laughs> we can't let this go on. We're not gonna lose to a backdoor or a base race today. Yeah. Well, we certainly hope they won't. Uh, this is really they will. You know, Shane, I, you know I what feel they it. will. <laughs> I feel that they will. I feel that EDG are gonna win. The That's just so top esports. It's so top esports to lose this game like this. It would be if they do lose it. But for the moment, we are getting into critical mask. Everyone's starting to hit. It's critical mass even, not mask. Jin's not in this game. But we are starting to see full items on AD carries. They're picking up elixirs. Rookie is almost finished up with his items as well. They're waiting for Wayward to pick up that Sunfire, which is normally a first item on the Cassante. Now going to be a very late item for him just to try and get him some kind of extra tankiness and damage. But like I said, it matters and it doesn't matter. There's like zero magic resistance on Wayward and Nico is hurting him so much. You know, I love this point in the game because we're now like hands off the keyboard. Analysis doesn't matter. Narrative nope. out the window. It's the all first about just... minutes of this game is relevant. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now it's just okay. Let's watch these these ten beautiful LPL players try to out hands dip each other in the next fight. You know, maybe there's gonna be some setups there so you can control some side waves, give different like ways to enter. Will there be any flanks? Sure. All that stuff is cool, but it's just gonna be all about the beauty of the team fight. Not sure why leave taking that from his uh, jungler there. You're full build and have an elixir, but. Nevertheless, we'll see what they're going to go for. Resets coming in. There's going to be that Baron co coming off now in the next couple of seconds. A Shadow Flame finished off for Rookie. He is full build. He's much further ahead of Fofo at this stage of the game. But I feel like if Fofo gets that uh, Rabadon's Death Cap, the Pop Blossom ends the game. Like, I don't I don't even care about anything else. Yes, Rookie can, uh, you know, throw his ultimate on top of Leave. That's fine. But Leave's got in a GA. I feel like the Pop Blossom is going to be the big thing that's going to change this game. He's yeah, very really close. I think he has it off this. 
I also think, right, seeing and having key learnings from that last fight is, like, where they fight. In big open spaces, that could benefit top esports. And, like, they have ways to maneuver on the Cyclone and the Pop Blossom and some of these different abilities. But if we end up fighting, like, like closed jungle corridors again, there's just really no way to avoid them other than not walking in. But then some of your members are getting isolated. Like, last fight, you're getting run down. So where the fight takes place really can be the difference maker in an EDG win versus a top esports win. <laughs> oh, wait, but JJ, is he still just looking he for the back it. I mean, if he gets a summoner off, if he gets a an ultimate well, away, if he forces someone back, it, it's, a, it's a win. I mean, well, now, uh, though, now with the inhibitor spawning, not really going to be much in terms of cheeky plays you could do. We'll at least clear out some of this vision. Oh, actually, not going to really clear out any of this vision. <laughs> got our ward. Yeah. And a little bit of extra gold as uh, he has a, got a hex drinker now, so can survive a little bit more with his GA. It's just so difficult right now. They are going to oh, start moving no. forward. Fofo needs to leave. Fofo needs to leave. Fofo, he's dead. There's nothing he can do. He's 100% dead here, and that's going to be a huge pickoff now in favor of top esports. There's just not a lot he can really do. He can delay, and they can get the waves in order. It's just a pick. As that Pop Blossom comes in, does a lot of damage. That's what I'm talking about, but that was Fofo. I Honestly, Fofo, that's on you, buddy. You should not be there. You didn't need to be there. That is. You're in a very like awkward point in the game now where... It's like, what do you do, right? You're either ping-ponging waves from, like, neutral or safe positions inside, which I guess what they should have been doing, or you're just over-grouping and waiting for the next objective to spawn. It looks like for EDG, they're still hoping that they can just find an avenue to, like, backdoor through the base. But TS being vigilant, keeping Wayward and Rookie, you know, near base, not going to give the opportunity to EDG over to look for that play. And Dragon now coming up in one minute. Dragon in a minute. Baron and 45. It's actually only six seconds between the two objectives. You can't really trade the L Baron. I got to feel like you got to choose to fight at either one. We'll wait to see if Fofo responds with his death cap or not. They will not take away the pink ward. Finally, I saw a lot of pings going on it. They will spot it out. I feel like in those situations, you need to make sure you're not kind of getting those things. And now we come back into this game. Full build. Actually, no boots for leave. Gone away is the boots. Now has himself Runan's Hurricane. You still don't have the Rabadon's Death Cap for the Nico. Fofo still waiting for that. That's going to be potentially game-changing as we hit. eight Level 18 for everyone who isn't a jungler or support. Yeah, we're at a huge point right now. We're also looking at summoner spells, right? Flashes up across the board because we haven't had action in a while. No. So a lot to be able to play with. We already yes, know so. 4 EDG. Are here. They could shred this. It's only HP. Red and or sorry, green and white. They want to fight. No TP being called out from Wayward or from Ala just yet. They're going to use the back door still. They're going to look for the back door, but Cassante is there to meet him. You're not going to get anything here, buddy. As they look to try and go over, they're going to flip it. They're going to go for it. The Elder Lucky secure. gets it. And that's Rookie getting the full secure on the Elder. Leave can do nothing. They're going to try and make this fight afterwards, but the Elder is just too damn strong. Leave does his best, gets marked, but gets nothing else. And we're going to game three. And now, I mean, Rookie just dealing too much damage. The we? clutch factor being there is both. He's going to go down. Bofo's going to go down. And maybe they don't end this game right at this second machine. But now, Hextech Soul. They've been picking up, you know, the past few Barons. They have Elder. It feels like this has to be it. Yeah, there's the TP oh, coming actually, in. They're going to try and end it. They're going to try and end it right here. It took a while. It was 43 minutes. But this series will go all the way, much like in spring. It will go down to a 2-1 scoreline, and Top Esports keep themselves alive. Yeah, Top Esports bring it out. Sadly, it didn't end in the very Top Esports way, which is them getting backdoored, but good for Top Esports, and I'm glad that they maintain it, right? Still keeping the fight close, showing that even if they do go down to teams like LNG or EDG in Game 1, that they can still bring it back, even if it is, it's messy, it's, you know, it's a little bit different, it's a little bit abstract. Uh, that's just you the top squint, esports you know? way. You gotta squint yeah. a little bit and see, see the exactly. beauty in what they bring. But what an incredible game number two to bring us to equal standings one and one.
this is the thing though it's like yes great awesome top esports one but they have to work so yeah. hard they have to do so much digging to get themselves out of that hole and eventually right at the end they might not have even got it if jackie love dies way before any of these yeah. souls are elder that's game adg could have had a 2-0 we could have had a very different conversation but thankfully for top esports and their fans across the world they are still in this and they are still looking to make sure they do not go 0-2 at the start of the split and I'm happy, you know. I came into the day expecting I was in for a nine-game day of casting. We didn't get that, but I'm happy at least this, you know, this top-tier matchup on paper ends up going the distance. And I'm glad, we, you know, we highlighted in draft. We need we need to see a better performance out of Rookie. We need to see a better performance out of Wayward. We they did. have kind of highlighted <laughs> these guys in draft by taking these champions early on. And yeah, we got it, like you just said. We, we got the performances that we needed. Yeah, I mean... It was the big thing. Look, Jackie Love as well, I think, stepped up as well. But it was obviously, you know, from the, even the first series against LNG, Jackie Love was playing well. Didn't have a great time in game one, but definitely looked a lot more comfortable in game number two. The fact that, you know, Rookie did steal the Elder Drake away just because he's so huge on this Syndra. That's the thing. Smites are great and all, but Smites are only really relevant for the first, like, 30 minutes of the game. After that, yeah. the amount of sheer damage that is coming out from everybody means that Smites are a nice thing, but they're not a guarantee. No, I mean, not even, I mean, think about it. You have a smite or you have a full build Syndra with like an elixir. It's, you know, I, yeah. I feel like one's going to do significantly more damage. I'd love damage to know how much damage he did to, to secure. I really would. But yeah, yeah. I mean, Look, for top esports, they keep themselves alive. We can be happy about that. And we saw what we wanted to see. Wayward and Rookie kind of stepping up for EDG. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. It was good at points, and it looked like they definitely had a thing, but like Ala looked way off on this Jax in the early game. Fofo was just randomly getting caught on side lanes for no other reason than I just want to try and get this. I understand it, maybe the one at top side where it's like, yeah, he wanted his Rabadon's death cap, but then you give the gold over, you give the reset over, you can't pressure. There's so many little small little things that work against you when you give over that kind of a pick. Yeah, and I get the problem is like some of the, the later ones like you're talking about, they were more excusable, but a lot of those early ones, they put TS in the position where they were really able to run over the game and then having times where like you're losing out everywhere. It's like you're getting caught out bot side while all is getting solo killed and you're also like losing the neutral objective. There's so many points where they're giving over way too much. Again, kudos to EDG for, for being able to, to make top esports have to work for this. Yeah. But uh yeah, sadly, in the end, it just wasn't enough. And now you're definitely going to go into the next game, keeping your eye on things like the Cassante. Because let's remember, Cassante was a champion that really wasn't getting through draft some of the first few matches we had. And then it's been getting through more and more. And I, I wonder if teams are going to go back to me like, okay, maybe this is a higher priority to ban. And more specifically towards rookie in the next game, being like, hey, we'll let him get on something that can... Uh, It'll be strong in lane, but hell, what are you gonna do, right? They're actually gonna ban Singer the first phase <laughs> yeah, of bans. Who do you not ban? Probably not. Do you want to ban right like now? Just, yeah, I mean that's just how it is. It's it's a good and a bad thing, but like I mean, look, my my MVP, regardless of who ends up getting it, is gonna be Wayward. Ten, two, and four, carried the early game on his back, kept Ala in a hole because the thing is that Ala you know, looked exceptional in game number one on the Gwen, tried to do something similar here in game number two, but because Wayward kept him down, kept him so far behind, it meant that Jackie Love was able to get the GA, was able to get himself away from a oncoming Jax. Even right at the end, right between that uh, that uh, Elder Drake fight, Allah was looking for the end. It wasn't actually, the call from EDG was to actually go and end the game yeah. with Allah if all five members were at the Dragon Pit. He called it, they made the decision, and they backed them up. They, they, it's just smart play coming out here from where he hope he does get the MVP. If he doesn't, he's our MVP. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Great showing from him. And again, I, I even understand the game plan from EDG. You know, you know you probably can't win the team fight at that point in time. They have big front line. You do not have big front line. Go for the yeah. back door. But yeah, Wayward. Wayward and top esports overall were just very conscious. Wards everywhere. And then making sure they're marking the, the back door.